to start off this video, I want to deal with the concepts uh, in words value and invaluable. Now, that would be like natural versus artificial. Let's take, for instance, a tree. A tree is a natural thing that God has provided for man. It produces oxygen, many times even food, warmth if needed to be burned, uh, possibly even building material to actually build a shelter to keep oneself covered from the elements. Is that item valuable? Because that's what we only understand more than not in our vocabulary. Or is it invaluable? Well, I would say to the individual who's in the middle of the woods trying to survive, I would say that the tree is invaluable. Invaluable because it's helping to produce oxygen. Invaluable because it's going to provide him that shelter if he builds with it. Invaluable if he's going to eat anything that comes off that tree. And I think God, more than not, has provided so much invaluable things for us that we fail to see this because of our own lack of knowledge and humility and that big bad word ego because we are not humble when we don't look at the things that God has left us as a gift so in man's world we create things everything's all value we take things that are invaluable and now we put a value concept onto it so we put a price tag on the tree. So now the pine tree that I could have built my home with now has a value level because I'm going to do something for sale with it. Is that a true or accurate, logical concept, value? Didn't even make sense to the natives because the natives didn't have any money. So the invading forces that were coming in to take over the land had to figure out how to kind of get them on the grid with them in order to do some kind of monetary exchange. So they had to get them to accept money to know that they could take things in exchange. First they bartered with them, then they tried to figure out how to give them a comfort level to take the money so they could go somewhere and get something else with it. So money is not a natural concept. It's not natural. It's an unnatural thing. Man did not, was not born with money, no pockets, no such thing existed. When we make stuff up like this and we pretend something is something that it's not, then it's kind of imagination. Now the earth has little divisions and little things that we now believe in. So we'll call something Canada or the United States or we'll call it all these different little names because now we can use them for some kind of commerce and trade. But are they really there or is it just conceptual? So money has been used more for an idea of value. And because man can't seem to get his balanced scales together <laughs> to keep things at a balanced level, it fluctuates at whatever the wind blows at daily, which is not a way to run things even in a logical manner. So the problem, man's value world can go anywhere because there's no bounds to it. But you can't mess around with what's natural. You remove that tree from the ground and remove the roots, that tree may not be coming back unless some seed was left behind. You clear cut all the forests for value, no one in reality under the concept of invaluable, viewing those trees for what they are, would ever do that. So therefore, could that concept be involved in our name? Could our Christian name be invaluable prices because you could never pay for it? It's the thing that makes you breathe. It's the spirit of God in you. It's a given. It's a fact. It's correct. It's proper. It's got, it is the property. But man says, no, the property is under this false name called a fiction, a lie. So we'll, by the 13th century, have everybody using these names. And eventually, to date, we just would believe that 
Without a surname or out a family name, we couldn't be whole. Well, we know that that has to be looked at in its factual history. What came first, the given name or the surname? But because positive law has to track people for reasons of secular commerce and debt, and to identify them as ignoramuses, which is what a surname would do, to identify you as someone with no covenant with the true God, as a Gentile, a heathen, a pagan, just kind of a well-domesticated animal. And because you need to be governed by law, the law requires the surname because you're using it. But if you're not using it, you could only have what originally you had, which was under common law, never a requirement in a name. So you could have just had your given name. So where do we go forward with this? When we add something or we become attached to something, we call that an addiction. You're not required to have an addiction to live. We know many people have been on narcotics and very bad drugs. We call that a drug. Drug comes from drudge, slave. And people become slaves to those drugs. Well, money is like a drug. Monetary secular gain is like a drug. There's never enough for the wealthy man. He wants more and more and more. But is that required? Could someone enforce me to have to have that name? Is it absolutely the law that I would be required to have that? Or is it just something that maybe the state requires and therefore the state provides the remedy because they require it? Maybe that's why the Register General only registers events, not people. Because it was never intended for personal identification, but then you interpreted it to be personal identification, and then you interpreted what was the given name and the surname, and then filled in the blanks, possibly thinking that was correct, but it may not have been correct. And you took it from a certified extract, not a certified true extract. And therefore, because it's not really your name, it's really counterfeit and feigned. But Caesar needs it in the world of his fictional world. But they signed for it and they subscribe at the bottom. Didn't require your signature from birth. They provided it. They would even give it to homeless people. Could that be possibly what's really going on? Or we just didn't see it? What came first? A driver's license or a birth certificate? But why is it all of a sudden your signature is on it? Because you're going to do something with it that was not lawful. So now you take responsibility for the truth and the consequences that you're involved with. I hope that you're understanding what we're talking about because your Christian name or your given name or your factual or proper name, your genuine name, your real name is invaluable because it's truth. You can't put a value on truth. It's invaluable. But in man's world of greed, profit, debt, you're required to have a name that belonged to the world of fiction, Satan's world. So he creates a name that he tries to put on par. In fact, not even a par, he tries to put it above par. So he puts it over and above your name and says, that's your name. But if it's not true, and it represents arms, a heathen position, an unbeliever, someone who would tell a lie, someone who would bear arms and be a civil participant who would go and be drafted in an army to kill people because arms only belong to people for the purpose of killing one another. And we know many Christians are mixed up on this under the right to bear arms. Why would they want to have a right to do something that Christ never preached? Why would they want to be a civilian when that means you're part of the militia? Why would they want civil rights? 
wouldn't it be best to give up your civil rights within the participants who want to be civil? You can't hold on to something and then not pay for it. And you need to have a license to use something that doesn't belong to you because that's the way the law works. So if I use someone else's property, the law requires me to have a license to use it. But you cannot hold on to it and then not pay for it and then call yourself, per se, a free man on the land. How ridiculous is that? No wonder the government has labeled them as a terrorist arrangement. They want to use something that would go against the public interest because the surname is public property. It's tax. It identifies them within that as a tax collector. You farm tax, that's what a farmer did. So therefore, to use that public side and say you're not going to pay for that is complete ridiculous rebellion and anarchy. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. The money belongs to Caesar and the money is within the surname. Now, if you're planning on giving back and abandoning and returning that, at least that makes logical sense to me in peace. But you would have to be left something that is truly individual not within an aggregate. And the only thing that could be is the given fact, your given name. But when you attach that given name to that surname, it's no longer a Christian name. It becomes just a given that you've consented to surety the debt of another. And whether the crown was in debt or not, and whether the whole thing is collapse and is collapsing in debt, you are sureting your own disaster. And the aggregate and democracy all goes down together. It's one big insurance risk pool. You were assured your grace from Christ. You're your own surety to ensure your own risk in an aggregate of ignorant people in an aggregate mass legal gambling scheme on something that has no backing other than your own make-belief because you didn't see it Fortunately, when you don't know what I've just said, in God's eyes, ignorance is an excuse. But in man's world, you touch something that belongs to someone else and you don't know, it's not yours. Ignorance is no excuse in the eyes of the law because you're using the law name, not your grace name. Don't expect to be freed from the law if you're not going to walk in grace. But you can't have what you had in the law world because that would violate the rule of law. So God is not above that until you remove your position from the rule of law by touching what doesn't belong to you. But if you're touching it, it is only honorable to pay for it. So the journey is, how do you get to that next stage? How do you get to that door? The next video is just going to deal with a very simple understanding of that. And then we hope through this, we'll be able to move forward. Now, we've had some interesting emails come in from someone who has watched the videos. And I know he'll probably be watching as he's kept in tune with it. And he's probably the most accurate uh, observer I've seen um, by the name Paul. And uh, I respect his communications and I hope that we're able to clarify some things together because he is not sitting on his hands. He's actually doing something. It was probably one of the more refreshing emails I've received. So we hope that others are going to not just sit on their laurels and start doing something. What I provide is providing for free on these videos. I do not turn this into a secular business. This has nothing to do. This is a spiritual journey at this point. And that's why these videos are free for you to watch. And that's why I promote peace, not war. So if you are going to battle against Caesar, turn my videos off because I have no interest helping you.